Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Joe's Technology. I'm Joe, and today I'm unboxing the Gigabyte Bricks, specifically the AMD 8, uh, Alpha 8 version. Uh, if you haven't heard of the A-Series CPUs, these are uh, <clears throat> AMD's uh, innovation where they've taken one of their Radeon graphics and put the core inside a, a quad-core CPU. Now the trade-off is, is that uh, there's no internal memory as you would find with a, a video card that has dedicated memory so you have to provide your own. And for that I went ahead and chose Corsair memory for this build. I specifically picked the fastest memory that I was able to find since the uh, speed of the memory is also going to be the speed of the video memory. So I tried to find the, the fastest I could. I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put 8 gigs in this particular build since this is a little a little workstation that will run Linux and do little odd jobs for me. And for the build, uh, for my storage, I chose a Samsung SSD, uh, the 840 EVO. This one has 120 gigabytes. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. And uh, this is an m sated device. So the Bricks is much smaller than it, it looks. I mean, as you can already see, this box is uh, not very big. As a matter of fact, here, let me look around. Hmm. It should have something for scale. Ah, there we go. <clears throat> well, everything here seems to be based on the size of a soda can, but there you go. <laughs> so, compared to a Pepsi can, as you can see, this is a small box. And normally, the device in the box is a lot smaller than the packaging it comes in. So, let's see how small the bricks is. I've been waiting to uh, open this up. I'm looking forward to it. I, I was busy all week, uh, so this will be my first opportunity to finally feast my eyes on one of the bricks series. Now eventually I'll probably end up getting one of the Brix Pros as well, but I wanted to get this little one here uh, as a little general Linux workstation to get a uh, little odd jobs done. <clears throat> let's be tidy here. Alright, so let's see where this opens up. Um, oh, look at it. It looks like a really nice box that just slides. Here, let's see if my theory is correct. And it is. So that's why there was so much uh, plastic wrap on it, because <clears throat> otherwise this thing would just slide out. Well, it's pretty tightly in there. Here, I'll let gravity do most of the work. There we go. <laughs> it only took a moment. And uh, here, I'll just... And I'm going to take a wild guess. And this little guy is the bricks. Dum, dum, dum. The bricks is very small. <clears throat> oh, again, our little model for size comparison. In case you were wondering, this is the Gigabyte Bricks. Now, basically, this device is built using uh, laptop hardware. So, uh, the same type of uh, components and processor and even memory that you would find in a typical laptop computer is what comes inside the bricks. But the bricks does not com come as a complete unit. That's why you see that I have uh, memory and storage. So this is actually a kit. Uh, it's designed to be a bare bones uh, unit that you put together yourself. Uh, now, all right, be before you become concerned, because normally building your own PC requires oh, all kinds of uh, stuff and people get worried. Oh, you know what? This screwdriver is probably too big. Hmm. Let's look around. I know I have a smaller screwdriver. Yeah, of course this happens. As soon as I have the camera running, that's when I find out that I'm missing something. I just have a little screwdriver here, not just a few minutes ago. There it is. Okay. <clears throat> so be aware that uh, <laughs> you're going to need a smaller screwdriver to get into the bricks. Otherwise, you'll end up uh, stripping the screws. So here I found one of my little kits. Well, let's see if I can get this open. Okay, great. So there are just four screws to opening this unit. See if I can get this lined up. There we go.
I wanted to demonstrate exactly how easy this is because uh, many people are intimidated by the idea of uh, putting together a computer themselves but this one's pretty darn simple anyone should be able to do this and it's just a matter of getting its, your screwdriver slotted in these tiny little screws Whoops, uh oh, <laughs> don't want to hit the camera there. Okay, there we go. So there were only four screws to take out, and now we're ready to open up the, uh, the bricks unit itself. Of course, make sure that you've discharged any static electricity that might be on your fingers, especially this time of the year. This is being filmed in, in the tail end of the winter time. So static is a, a real danger. All it takes is one good spark off your fingers to turn this into junk. And you'll be very upset if you do that. Now let's see. Hmm. Now that we have our four screws off, how do you come apart, my little friend? Ah, there we go. It's just uh, a little snug. Ugh! And off it comes. <clears throat> so this is the inside of the bricks unit. Uh, as you can see, it actually already comes with something. In this case, Gigabyte included um, a Wi-Fi. I believe this is an N. So there's already a Wi-Fi seated in there. And then we have an empty MSATA slot for our storage and space for our two SODIMs. Now, when choosing SODIMs for these uh, particular bricks, um, the current line of bricks that's out has a very special requirement, and it's important to observe that. They uh, require SODIMs uh, that use 1.35 volts rather than the typical 1.5. So if you get the other kind, you'll find that they won't operate. So that's very important to be aware to make sure that you get the correct voltage. I probably should have opened these packages before I started filming, but eh, what the heck. Live and unscripted. Alright, so we have one of our memory uh, SODIMs out. And in fact, I'll just go ahead and, and seat this thing right away rather than have it sit around on the desk. So, the nice thing about memory is that it's keyed, so the key can only go in one way. Um, you just match it up to the notch that you see in there and slide it down into place and lock it. So there's no way to mess this up. I just need to... ah, there we go. So now it's actually seated in place and then you just press down and uh, lock it. But here, now that that's seated, here let me get the other one. They really put these packages together really well. I suppose if this was in a store, <laughs> shoplifters would have trouble getting this stuff out to get it in their pockets. That's probably the idea. Hey, but at least it's not those fiendish uh, packages. Uh, oh, that plastic stuff. I don't remember what they call it that you find in a lot of stores these days. Alright, so you can just press down and you can see the memory locks into place. Make sure I'll have that in front of the camera for the next one. Again, we just slide it in, line it up. You'll see that the key goes in there. If you have to force this in, you're doing it the wrong way. I mean, this slides in there very, very smoothly, and you just press down, and you hear a little click, and it locks. And the memory is seated. That simple. Now we just need our storage. So we have our Samsung 840 Evo, and uh, let's see, there should be a little place where this opens. Ah, there it is. So I see the little plastic here. Alright, I don't want to cut myself on camera. <sighs> Murphy's Law is usually in effect here in my lab, so uh, <laughs> I wouldn't put anything past uh, happening uh, while I'm videoing something. 
have to be careful. Okay, so, ta-da, that huge box, and that's the storage. Uh, M-SATA uh, SSDs are not very big at all, but this, this little guy holds 120 gigs. Now, before we can put him on there, though, there is a locking screw that holds this unit in place. You saw that the memory was able to lock down onto little, uh, uh, little brads here that uh, hold them where they are that are already built into the board, but the uh, SATA doesn't have that. All it has is a single locking screw. So before we take it out, uh, we want to go ahead and remove that screw so that we're ready to uh, put it into place once it gets there. So again, line up your screw, get your screwdriver slotted, and out it comes. Okay, so now I've got my screw out, and it's ready to accept my SSD. Now, 120 gigs by no means is the largest that's available. It just happens to be what I chose for this particular build. Oh, and Samsung's very proud, and they think that you are too, so they include stickers if you want to say proudly, there's a Samsung SSD inside this device. Um, to be honest, I, I give the stickers to kids that collect stickers. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> But if you want to, you know, you can, you can have some. Okay, so now we have our SSD. Again, static is a real danger here. You want to make sure that you don't have uh, problems with static. Oh, here, I'll try to keep it in the light without getting into the shadows. Eventually, I'll, I'll get more lighting in here. Um, oh, and as before, this device is slotted, so it can only go in one way. So you just line up the teeth to what you see here, and see it, it normally goes in like so. Whoops, oh, i got to keep it in front of the camera. <laughs> so once I have it slotted, then I just put it down, and it lines up with that screw hole, that uh, we mentioned. See, it's, it's spring-loaded. So now I just put in the screw to lock it in place. And it'll stay right there. Okay, now here's the bad part. And uh, this is just a, a personal recommendation of mine. Well, let's provide I can find the darn thing. Um, ah, here we go. Sometimes you have to work with very little screws, and they are annoying. So personally, I prefer one of these. Well, you might be able to see it better with the background of that dark monitor behind me. This is a little little grabby. Um, I don't know the official term for it. But as you can see, there's a screw now on the end of it. It makes it easier to uh, put the screw where I want it. Whoops. Here, let's get that Pepsi can out of the way. I just wanted to be able to do this to where you'd be able to see what I'm doing. So here, I'll put this down, and I can put the screw in place, and then get it started, and then finish it off with our screwdriver. Alright. So now it's in the hole where it needs to go. Otherwise, I would probably need a second pair of hands in order to get this uh, little screw in there, because it's a tiny one. Alright. So now we have our memory and our storage locked in place. So we can simply uh, put the cover back on, and this unit is ready to fire up. Come on, Briggs, don't be mad. It's okay. We're going to have fun together. All right, just as with any other uh, ATX power supply, you can force it off by pressing and holding. So here, let's give it a try again. Hmm. Okay, well, I guess I'll have to read the manual. Uh, let's look around. I know I've got a USB key here that probably has Linux on it someplace. And of course, the moment I need something, that's when I realize I don't have it handy. Where, where could the USB key be? 